this time on Graveyard Cars. Mark and Justin unbox and bench test the dash for the 1970 Challenger RT. Dougie and Ezra disassemble a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner. Justin installs the fuel lines and tank in the inviolate 71 Cuda convertible. And the dash for the Challenger will be installed if Justin can find a helping hand. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life, coming back to life. Self-proclaimed Mopar master Mark Warman and his protege painter Will Scott get paid to bring Mopar muscle cars back from the dead. They work with Mark's daughter Alyssa and his cousin Dougie. They're willing to travel anywhere to retrieve a customer's car, detailing how it lived its life and how it died. After that, they bring it back to make it look just like it did the day it was born. We just got our dash back from Instrument Specialties. Uh, this is an all blue dash for our 1970 Challenger RT. 446 pack, four speed Dana Super Track Pack, B7 blue over B5 blue guts. Justin is taking the lid off of it. I'm gonna give him a hand lifting it out. We'll put it on our test bench, make sure everything's still working like it did when it left the Instrument Specialties, and then we can install it in the car. The main, main sense of urgency here is the folks are gonna be out in just a couple of weeks to pick it up, and we've literally been able to do everything but the dash. So as soon as we get the dash in it, we can wrap up the few things that surround that, and then we can uh, have a big reveal, and I think they're gonna be thrilled to death to see this car, so. All right, ready? Yeah, let's take it off there, set it off to the side. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. God, that's beautiful. B5, right? Yeah. When we get this out, I wanna, I'm gonna show you what they do, and then I'm gonna tell you what never to do. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Yep. Good to go. Got it. Okay, let's go ahead and you I'll go around that way. Around. I'll go around this way. <clears throat> you know, our industry is like any industry. There's guys out there that think they can do something, and so they kind of can end up giving give the industry a bad name if they're not doing it right. You know, that's. We, we don't try to save any money on our restorations. We, these cost a lot of money to restore, but when they're done, they look exactly the way they're supposed to. They function the way they're supposed to, and they are the way they're supposed to be. All right, we're tied in. You, you got it in? Yep. Great. All right. Okay, and we got a battery in. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna run through a, a few tests. Why don't you hook the speedometer up first? And we'll go here, we we'll go speedometer. Beautiful. Going about 70? So that's your little that's your little 318 in there tinkering around. Now we just put a 383 in it. We're doing 105 miles an hour. There you now go. we got the big 446 barrel six pack and we're doing a buck fifty. Awesome. I love it. You see how all of the gauges shine and they look like they're supposed to. It's not just a decal put on there. It's yeah. re-inked. It's beautiful. It's the way it's supposed to be. And they reset everything to zero. Let's try that tachometer out. Okay, we're connected. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Works beautiful. Great. Everything checks out, so we're going to unbolt this, install it in the car. You can start wrapping that thing up. Excellent. Love it. So today, Ezra and I are going to disassemble a fairly rare car. It's a 71 Plymouth Roadrunner. It's a 446 pack car. It's in pretty good condition. Even the underside of this car is real clean orange paint, no undercoating on it. So should be a pretty interesting car to dismantle. First thing we're gonna do is just pull the hood off. So uh, I guess we could go ahead and pull the trunk off while we're at it.
This is a 1971 Plymouth Cuda convertible FC7 in Violet. We just got our stuff from Inline Tube, our brake lines, our vapor return line, and our fuel line. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start with installing the brake lines and the distribution block. I'm gonna start by setting the distribution block in here. There you go. While Justin continues work on the CUDA convertible, Larry installs the headliner in the 1969 GTX. So I already did like a mock-up and a pre-fit of all this stuff. Um, so I already, already got them out of the box, bent out the lines. Um, they give you little tags on, on the lines when you, when you get them because they come in a box and they're bent. So they give you, you get a sticker here and a sticker here and there's a bend. And that's where they tell you to straighten it out at. And so it, it makes it really easy for you. When you get your master cylinder in here, um, you can do some final tweaking to these lines just to get it to be able to line up right. Um, so you never really know your placement that are, these are gonna be yet. So I usually leave these ones loose until I get that master cylinder in there. All right, and that is it for our brake lines. Now I can move on to the uh, vapor return line and our fuel line. On your side. Set your side right down here on the ground. Nice. That's pretty clean underneath, isn't it? Yeah. Things are pretty tight on there, huh? Yeah, they were. I didn't expect them to be that tight. Warner Brothers purple Roadrunner horn. Now what we want to do is get all of our wiring and everything attached to the firewall unhooked. And we'll take all these components, including the wiper motor, off here. Excellent. Okay, that's our, that's our engine wiring harness there. Oh, you can, we'll get to that later. Okay. We have to undo, undo the wipers and the transmission inside, and then we'll get that motor off. <clears throat> How do you do that? Underneath that arm is a little clip. Back here? It's right underneath, on the bottom, underneath your left arm. Oh. Underneath. See that little tiny clip right there? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you still have that pick? You're on the little tiny one? Yeah. Lift up and slide it sideways, possibly. Oh, that was sweet. That it. was sweet. I think you got it. Now you just rock the whole assembly up and down and pull it off there. Beautiful. There we go. That's the easiest one you'll ever take off. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. I got the fuel line ready. I'm going to put this one in first. Um, I don't know how some other people do it, if they do both lines at the same time. I find, I find that to be pretty difficult. So I'm going to start with the fuel line first and then go to the, the vapor return line. All right, that's our fuel line. Now we can move on and uh, put our vapor return line on there. 
While Justin continues to make progress on the CUDA, Larry and Son wrap up the headliner in the 1969 Plymouth GTX. Meanwhile, Dougie and Ezra are outside continuing the 71 Roadrunner disassembly. Look at that. Oh, nice. <laughs> it melted. <laughs> Hot sun. You ever see one of those? Never. Melted, ran down the firewall. Eek. It's got antifreeze in it. So apparently this guy raced this car after his daughter got tired of driving it. Can you pop that breather off that valve cover there? Yeah, that works. Oh, yeah. that's okay. All right. Need to unhook our uh, throttle linkage and. Okay. So we can probably raise this up and get our front fender bolts loose. It's not coming apart too bad at all. I mean, yeah, there's been a couple little battles, but it's coming apart pretty good. So we'll go underneath and get the front end loose. How's that for height? This follows the exact same path as our fuel line. So there's, there's nothing crazy that, that's gonna happen. <laughs> now when you get that in place, as you can see, this one's a lot shorter. You, you put a rubber hose on here and it comes up. It goes up that way. Use these S-clips. You put the big end around your fuel line. And then your vapor return line snaps in right next to it. Or you attach it to it. And where this line doesn't end up following our fuel line is it branches off this way. Uh, now that we got these on, uh, we can go ahead and prep the gas tank, uh, get our fuel sending unit in, get our uh, gas tank mat, and put all that on, and then we can lift it up into place, put the straps on, get our J-bolts hooked up. Coming up, Justin continues work on the inviolate 1971 CUDA convertible. Dougie and Ezra dive deeper into the disassembly of the 71 Roadrunner. And Justin looks for help with the installation of the 1970 Challenger's newly arrived dash. Do you want to help hold me? On, hold on, hold on. The car of the year in 1969 and the car to catch in 1970, the Roadrunner, lives up to its name, like this one awaiting its restoration. In 1970, a new addition was the Dust World Tape Stripe, adding new identification to America's most exciting car. But it's what's under the hood that makes a Mopar a supercar. Standard on the Roadrunner is the powerful 383 four-barrel. If you want a bit more power, you can option the sizzling 440. Roadrunner included all all the hot options, including power brakes, power steering, torque flight transmission, air conditioning, and automatic speed control. The plethora of options, performance, and style make this 1970 Roadrunner our Corpse of the Week. This is our fuel sending unit right here. This indicates your your level, so if it's all the way up like that, you're gonna be, you're gonna have a full tank. Put a rubber gasket in right here. Just gotta slide these in pretty careful. And wherever your fuel line is coming, uh, sticking out at, um, your main fuel line from the car, you wanna make sure that your sending unit isn't tipped a certain way that it's not supposed to be, um, or else you're not gonna get a correct reading um, on, your, on your fuel gauge, and that'll be very frustrating. 
this little divot right here locks into this peak when you rotate it. So there's three of them. So you gotta make sure you lock this into each one of those peaks. So you gotta rotate it all the way around like that. So just keep some pressure on that. Just start tapping it into place. There we go. There we get all three of our peaks are lined up in there. This thing's ready to go in. Have you had a lot of experience with these hoists? Yeah. We had lifts like this at school. I might need a pry bar to get that radiator. Go ahead and pop those two out. What size? Half a, uh, seven sixteenths. I need a pry bar to get that radiator hose loose. <laughs> Get a sawzall and cut it. What do you think about that? Uh, well, that'd be the more fun and quick way, but it moves a little bit. You just gotta, it's just being an ass. Yeah. It's almost off. And get a little leverage. Oh, yep. There we go. Good. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the color I imagined it'd be. Rust. Yeah. We might have to pull the bumper. Huh? We may have to pull the bumper out. Why not? Yeah, let's do that. Let's pull the bumper out. Okay, let's try that. All right, the last thing we need to put on the fuel tank before we can go and lift it up into the car, I uh, just gotta put the uh, filler net grommet in here. Just wanna be careful you don't drop it in the tank because that'll be hard getting it out. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna gr grab our fuel tank straps and strap bolts, set them into place. Gotta be careful with these tanks. They're sharp and they will cut you. Okay, I kinda got it pinned into place. Now I'm gonna make some final adjustments to make sure we're lined up right. All right, so our alignment is looking pretty good. Then you can go, after you get that, you can go ahead and start getting your straps pulled into place. All right, with that was connected, you can go in, you can go in and just start tightening them up. Just your average deep socket isn't gonna go this far. So you're gonna have to get yourself a, a, a special deep socket or else you're gonna be sitting here for a long time with a, a wrench or a ratcheting wrench and it's, it's not fun. All right. All right. We could pull the tires off. It might make it easier to get in there. Yep. Three quarter inch and uh, can you tell if the lug nuts are left-hand thread on that side? Are they marked? Uh, they are. OK. OK. Okay. Hey, Ezra, 
What's up? Did Mark ever tell you the story about the time we were trying to burn off our tires? And we no. kept telling him that our tires were so good we couldn't burn them off, so him and his friend were gonna trade tires and try that. Nope. They went to lift the tires off and the car fell down on them, right? Mm. So five guys had to lift the car up off our friend's arms. Yeah, got in a hurry. They wanted to see who could burn out each other's tires, right? <laughs> okay, so we've almost got our, I think we need to raise it up and pull the radiator out. Yeah, there's nothing worse than... Solvent in your eyes? Yeah, what Mark's famous for is getting you on a motorcycle, and then he'll open up your throttle all the way and put a rock in there to hold the throttle all the way open, <laughs> and then he'll start it, and away you go. Yeah, right. Try to stop, right? Direct drive. If there's that? a wall in front of you, you will stop. Yeah, Mark's real good for stuck throttles. He likes to do that. So this little oh, okay. shield here yeah. has a bunch of screws that are buried under undercoating. And uh, there's uh, one, two, three, four. And I think clips at the top that'll pull out. So I'll get mine loose and I'll let you do yours. Try right. With a 70 Challenger dash unboxed and tested, Justin needs someone to lend him a hand with the installation. Mark is nowhere to be found. Hey, George. I wonder if you uh, got a minute. Could you help me with... Could you... Could you possibly help me install a dash? Can you help me put in the... Can you help me... We learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1970 Roadrunner received an additional Dust World tape stripe. If you were a music lover, what radio option was not available for the 1970 Roadrunner? Was it AM FM Solid State Radio, Stereo Tape Player AM Radio, Solid State AM Radio? Find out after the break. We learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1970 Roadrunner received an additional Dust World tape stripe. And now we've asked what radio option was not available for the 1970 Roadrunner. Think you know? Well, we pulled a fast one on you because all of these were radio options for the 1970 year. Which option would you choose? Oh, nice. I got the same problem. Come out in pieces. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Screws back here. Holding the bumper? Yeah, holding this. I don't know what the hell is holding the so bumper. <laughs> yeah. Loose. Yeah. Okay. taken the sides out in order to get to the bracket that held the bumper to the fender. <laughs> Jimmy, Christmas. How do they build these things? <laughs> and now we're having trouble getting the bumper out because of the lamps. Yeah, I think it's just this bottom piece hanging it up. So we'll need to lower it down and get those lower bolts out. Pretty cool stuff. It's plastic out of here. You reach yours? Without cutting myself and getting tetanus? I don't know. Yeah. 
without all that. Okay, now once that comes out, I think everything's ready to drop. Take it outside. Guess we don't got it. Someday I'll figure out how to take a car apart. Well, what it looks like to me is it's the R980 XR is going to be the right one. It just got all the features that need on it. Got a question for you? Yeah. So if you can do that, get me a, a quote with the weights and all the stuff that I need. Uh, and we'll get back together and figure that around. Does that sound all right? Okay. No, that sounds good. Yep, I'm just looking for a final price. You ever ride dirt bikes? I used to own one. What size? Uh, 125. Nice. Yeah. You ever ride a TM400? Nope. World's fastest production motorcycle. Back in 1974. Mm. I spent a lot of time on my back. <laughs> as well as other. <laughs> One time I was riding out across the field, just got it running again, and uh, somebody dumped a big mound of dirt about three feet tall. Oh, nice. About three feet tall. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, man, I'm going out across that field just, as Mark would say, honking. Yeah. And uh, the grass was really tall that summer, and I had no idea that mound of dirt was out there in that field. So, man, I'm going out across there. I ain't got no helmet on, right? We were kids. We didn't need helmets, right? Back in the day, didn't even have to wear seat belts in these cars back in the day. Right. So anyway, I'm ripping out across that field, and all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm going up in the air like a rocket. Mm. I swear I went 14 feet up in the air. <laughs> and then I came down like a rocket. <laughs> Landed on my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kind of hurt. <laughs> I lay there looking at the sky, and the sky looked really bright blue, you know? Yeah. So anyway, moral of this story is, be careful when you're on a TM400 and wear a helmet, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what most people would get from it. I night. really should be wearing a, a helmet right now. <laughs> yeah. Still to come, the disassembling duo continue to tear down the 1971 Roadrunner 446 barrel. And with a 71 convertible Cuda's gas tank installed, Justin moves on to the installation of the newly arrived dash for the 1970 Challenger. But first, he needs to find someone in the shop to lend him a helping hand. You want to help me? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. An under fender light. Oh, dude. Is that factory? <laughs> okay. Should be good. All right. Two fenders. Nice. You notice the cutouts for the headers on the bottoms of the fenders? Yep. We could uh, slap the tires back on real quick so we can roll it forward. Two will hold it. One would hold it. None will hold it if it's rusty enough. <laughs> Do these both go back or one go forward? Forward? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, nice tires. <laughs> okay, so we have a door cart here. Yep. Takes a load off our backs. So we're going to wheel this under the door. Okay. Mm. You got it set? Yep. There it is. And there we go. Beautiful. There we go. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. 
All right, so we have some additional parts in this car. <laughs> Heavy parts. <laughs> he left us a flywheel. Nice. And a clutch. What's up, Will? Yeah. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, got a question for you. Yeah, hold on. Do you want to help hold me? Hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Hey, did you oh, want to help yeah. me? One second. Oh boy. That's so heavy. Oh, that's cool. Has the firing order right on the intake manifold. Yeah. 1843 one, 184365. Yep. How'd you know Goodness. Nice. They glued that in really good, huh? All right, so we can start working the interior out, and then we're gonna have to cut the windshield out. So, we're gonna need a bunch of Phillips screwdrivers. There's one. Excellent. Mopar is famous for its high impact color options, and the 1970 Roadrunner doesn't shy away. In addition to the signature Roadrunner decal, the Roadrunner came with five distinct colors, true or false. The Roadrunner colors were Sublime, Go Mango, Top Banana, Plum Crazy, and Hemi Orange. Find out after the break. So, we've made the claim that the 1970 Roadrunner came with five distinct color variations. Were we telling the truth? Well, not exactly. You see, these are the five color variations if you were driving a Dodge. Plymouth, Chrysler, and Imperial called them Limelight, Vitamin C, Lemon Twist, In Violet, and Tor Red. If you didn't know, now you do. You sprayed these, right, Doug? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you <laughs> don't know. know. There's one more, man. Chill out. One more to go? Yeah. Is that good? Beautiful. Sweet. You did it. There's another one. Is there any tag under that seat? Rug no, but there seat? was a tag in there. Okay. Oh wait, I think it was on this <coughs> driver front seat, but might have fell off. After the arrival and bench testing of the 70 Challenger's dash, Justin has been searching. Can you help me install a dash? Fruitlessly for help with the install. Fortunately for him, Royal is loyal to the cause. I'll help you out. Yeah. Those guys won't help you. Thanks a lot. I know I asked everybody and they didn't want to help. Well, they didn't have time to, at least. You have time to? All right, and so that's... here it is. Nice. That's Gorgeous, very isn't nice. It? All the detail. They do a really good job. Well, they're... that's why they're the best. Okay. All right, let's we can take it down and let's see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, what's the last one you did? The last dash I did would have been the uh, convertible, Cornet. The Cornet? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago. All righty, you ready? Okay. So, oh, yeah, this old guy ain't squatting down through there. 
and then up. up. Okay. Loosen and Oh, wow. Nice and light. We got a broadcast sheet. We got a broadcast sheet. Oh, first one. Don't take it out. Just leave it. All right. So here's the driver's side. A little crusty, huh? Sick, dude. Damn, those ones are on pretty hard. Yes, they are. Oh, this thing's going on good. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay. What do you do with these? There you go. Nice. 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 Okay. All right. Moving right along. Check out those parts. Nice. Dead bee assembly. Dead bee assembly. There's even more. Make sure you get all of them. Nah, I'll just leave their dead corpses. No bees left behind. Dead corpses in the graveyard. Okay, so we've got the rest of the car pretty much dismantled inside the interior and everything is loose on the top of the engine. So now we're gonna put it back up on the hoist and get ready to drop out the engine and the rear end. So wish us luck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're gonna have great steering with that. A little bit further back? Uh, might be good, bro. Okay, go ahead and raise it up, Ezra. Ezra, you heard any good jokes like No, not really. Why do chicken coops have two doors? I don't know. Why do they? Because if they had four doors, they'd be a sedan. You're horrible. I, I don't know. Sweet. Is this garbage too? Yeah. Oh, what's he doing? Hi, Cousin Mark. Hey, you want to hear a funny joke? Yeah, I got a funny joke. Two fish were in a tank. Yeah. And one said to the other, do you know how to drive this thing? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a panzer. I don't think he liked our joke tough. at all. I can't top Mark at all on jokes, can I? <laughs> Not with dad ones. I'm slotted okay, in. Okay. Yep. You in? Okay, yep. Okay. I guess we can start making our connections. Yep. I think so. See, we can probably rest it down on your, on your knees if you mm -hmm. need. Some of these connections I can make. This is going to be when oh, the it's dash even is up. Yeah. Heater box. Yeah, that's it's tucked pretty far in there on this. Golly, I'm way out of practice. <laughs> Nice, everything is so clean and labeled. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Damn, throwing sparks. What is the deal? Uh, hydro locked. Hydro locked. I don't know. Screwdriver is always the answer. Ready? Okay. 
Oh, Back that? Off. Rust falling off. It's not moving anymore. I think it's getting stuck somewhere in here. I do too. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Ready. So we got it. Five. Here we go. Nice job. Let's get out of here. So we had a little trouble with the driver's side torsion bar on this uh, car, and uh, I'm tired of fighting it. So we're going to take a different approach now. What we're going to do now is loosen up the K-member bolts, and we're going to pull the K-member off the torsion bar and leave the torsion bar in the car and deal with it later. Here we go. This car has been a battle. <laughs> yep. Wow, that one came out really easy. Great. Oh, so did that one. Okay, that's good. We're good. Good to go. Is there a hose? Oh, okay. No. That was a battle, <laughs> but we finally won. <laughs> right? Yep. Victory? <laughs> we beat a Mopar. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Oh, good day, Ezra. Yep. Ready to call it a day? Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. There we go. All right. Adios, Mopar. We actually connected that time. <laughs> we didn't miss. <laughs>